What is going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. So today's review playtest is of these absolutely beautiful Morelia Neo 4 Betas in the Volt and Red colorway. Very, very excited to get these on feet. As you can see, they're uh, quite dirty already. I have actually trained in these once before on a turf pitch similar to the one that I'm standing on now. Uh, my goal with these playtests is to get a little bit, some on FG, some on AG, and I'll talk about kind of the differences between the two types of surfaces. And of course, we'll get into uh, dribbling shooting and all that stuff today now that we have a net with proper proper uh a net setup as opposed to just the frame so let's hop into the uh try on portion all right here we go so one of the things that i noted with the uh the try on of or the initial try on of the um unboxing video is that the true to size for these actually fits me really well uh, as you can see this upper is just unbelievably soft like the the leather quality on here is so so good oh there we go boom so as you can see here true to size fits pretty pretty perfectly and no complaints so far with uh how they fit um wraps your foot really nicely the synthetic and knit of the midfoot does a good job of making you feel super locked in which is one of the things that i think this this style of football boot does really well there's a lot of different boots on the market now that have used this formula of the leather in the forefoot synthetic in the midfoot knit or a standard youth throat tongue through that lacing system area and it does a really good job of uh you get like performance and touch and all the best of all the worlds all in one football boot which is pretty awesome so here we go oh bunched up a little bit on the end there. I think it's because my socks are already kind of sweaty. Let's actually make sure. These, uh, the little grip texturing on the bottom of these grip socks are super grippy, which is awesome. But it also means that as I stick my foot in, sometimes it sticks to the sole plate already and then pushes the sole plate, or push the sole plate, pushes the uh, foam insert forward, which is uh, always a fun one. All right, perfect. Yeah, the fit of these is just awesome. Little bit of space there on the outside of my feet, so that's one thing that I'm hoping will go away. It's not as pronounced on my left foot. Maybe it's just because of the way the boots fit, but you can kind of see it there. I can stick a finger down in there. Um, honestly, the rest of the boot, though, fits well enough that I don't really worry about that too much. Um, as they start to break in, it's possible that I'll stick another hole kind of down this area and poke another hole there. That way I can get an even deeper lacing system here on that lateral side, which will just help pull that material forward. So just something to keep in mind. One of the things that I absolutely love about Mizuno products, and to be fair, even the Alpha falls into this category, even those, even though those studs are triangular is the stability and the just quality of grip you get with this style of sole plate that's all conical studs really neutral pretty bouncy if i'm honest like in the best way like they really like i really feel like i'm kind of up on my toes with these which is awesome um, that's one thing that i love about the morelia neo 3 neo 4 sole plates um, that's one thing why I think the DNA is such a special boot is because it gives you that Neo sole plate with the Morelia 2 upper, which is just the quality of this leather all over the boot, which is just absolutely sensational. One of the more immediate things that I'm also feeling with these boots is how sensational the heel area is. Uh, a lot of boots for me, because of the way that they fit and feel, um, often will have a little bit of pain in the midfoot and the forefoot area, just on the lateral side where my foot is the widest. And then because of the way the boot's shaped, they give me often a little bit of slippage in the heel area. That is not the case with these football boots. Like the, the way that Mizuno, and I would say the only other boot company that does this to my taste, at least that fits my foot the best, um, is Asics. And Asics and Mizuno do some of the best heel areas. They're both different, so that's something to keep, maybe you'll fit in one and not the other, but God, the, the just the heel area in these, and then DS Lite series, X-Fly um, uh, 5, I guess now, four and five, um, and the DS Lite X-Fly Pros and all that, all of those, including these, just provide the most insane amount of um, 
lockdown. And that's one thing that I love about this heel area. And one reason why I'm willing to sacrifice a lot of the things that come along with this boot, like break in time and some other things in order to get the, the stability in that heel area. One thing I'm also looking forward to as well with these boots is how incredibly soft and no nonsense the upper is. Um, I think the one of the things that really annoyed me about the 99 gram leather boots is that Adidas didn't do a very good job at investing in quality leather for the forefoot. Like it's fine, uh, but it's really not. It's a, it's a little bit thick and the difference and the way that the seam happened between the synthetic and the leather just, ah, uh, you know, it just kind of pissed me off because here we go. So I'll show you on these ones, right? So if you notice how seamless this leather is into the transition with the synthetic, there's no like bulbous area of the forefoot that makes it kind of pop out. And especially on the inside, I think it's relevant because when you're bending a ball with like this area of your foot, if this leather material is a lot more kind of bulbous and large than the super nice synthetic midfoot, you get this really weird kind of drop off in material that sort of screws with the tech not screws with technique but it really kind of screws with the way that these boots the the ball kind of spits off of your foot if that i'm trying to you guys kind of understand what i'm saying with that but with a boot like this you can notice how seamless it is like i can run my finger and there's no like oh now we're like bulbing up and over it's like perfectly seamless and so you get the comfort of the forefoot of this leather while getting the stability and the lockdown from this midfoot which i think is one of the things that makes this foot this boot so legendary for so many people and that i think if you are somebody who can fit in the midfoot with the synthetic you'll absolutely fit in these boots because look how unbelievably soft that forefoot is like the leather just bends and molds so effortlessly to your foot super super nice let's get into some ladder work all right first things first little ladder side to side shuffle we'll go through each one twice here we go nice nice yeah really good really really good the lateral stability the the little elements that they've put on the inside and this is why i think a boot like mizuno asics does the same a similar thing as well but boots that have been in production for so long and it's basically just been the same silo over and over and over again with minor tweaks and improvements that's why boots like these are so good because you get the minor little details of the like on the alpha, right? Like the little nano grip elements on the inside of the boot. They do that with these as well. And so there is zero slippage on the inside of the foot as you're moving like side to side with anything like that, which is obviously very important when you're doing any sort of cutting side to side, a little bit like this, forward, forward, forward. Nice. Um, the other feature of this boot, obviously that's you know such a good kind of test is that the forefoot gives you a little bit more flexibility. And so as you are pushing off, right? So let's say, you know, this grid, I'm going in the forefoot with the toe allows my feet to do this. And so I can really get a good amount of grip under my foot. And then the midfoot stops my, the grip from like twisting over. So you get like the grip with kind of a claw like you would if you were barefoot and then that midfoot holds your foot in place as i'm planting and moving sideways which is just freaking awesome and that's something that i think as we'll move the camera over here um i think that's one of the winning features of this morelia neo 4 beta <sighs> yeah lovely see i don't as long as you wear boots that fit, you shouldn't have is issues if it's used with blisters. Can't say that. Say it three times fast, I dare you. Right, but even, even boots that kind of fit you um, at least a little bit out of the box. As I say to everybody, break in time is not a bad thing. If you need break in time for the boot, it probably means it's gonna fit you perfectly once it is broken in. So, all right, next little section, um, same idea, different patterns through the uh through the gates and that or through the ladder and then we'll do just a little bit of freestyle dribbling get a sense of what the upper feels like um, as well here we go nice yeah this leather is so soft 
man, I love the way this feels underfoot. I would say it's not as locked in as some of the other boots in this category, um, especially in the forefoot area. I think the leather is so good and so soft that it just, it, it's not overstretched uh, already, but I would say it just has a little bit of extra space in there that I'm gonna have to get used to because I'm used to boots being like stupid, stupid, stupid tight, which honestly, if I'm thinking about it from a foot health perspective is probably not the best, but that's what it is. But overall initial impressions, especially when starting to move a little bit more aggressively through some of these drills, very, very good. Zero issues with the sole plate so far. Little bit of hot spots on the outside of my feet, um, but so far, so good. Getting through the ladder here, a little bit faster. Boom, nice, lovely. Yeah, feeling of the synthetic midfoot on ball, like doing any sort of kind of croquetta like that feels absolutely awesome in these, just because of how seamless and thin that midfoot is. And uh, I don't think there's gonna be many issues with these football boots, especially once I get that midfoot broken in, which is probably gonna be, for me at least, the most challenging part about these football boots. There we go. Awesome, let's jump into some more dribbling. All right, use this as an opportunity to take them off for the first time in the session. Getting a little bit of hot spots down towards the ankle area, which is where my foot juts out the most. So in the initial review of these boots, you guys probably knew that uh, the sizing is absolutely perfect. Um, I think the sizing works out to be just awesome, true to size with these. Uh, but I would say that the midfoot, especially because of that synthetic, uh, it is quite aggressive and there's an internal, you get the, that grip element, the nano grip on the inside, but there's a grip cage that you can see from the inside of the boot um, right in this, where that running bird logo is. And this running bird logo also acts as a little bit of that lateral stability. So right down here, like kind of in that area where the boot is kind of tapers off into the heel area, which um, it tapers off into the thin heel area, which I of course love given that I have a pretty thin heel. Um, but I don't know if that provides you any sort of like <laughs> help or whatever. Maybe I'll take some photos or like measure my foot, but I've got a really, really big bone that kind of sticks out right there. And so I often will get hot spots in that area just because it is, um, yeah, just really, uh, whatchamacallit, just like really, really tight on most boots. So, but yeah, I mean, look at that. That's crazy. Like this upper, the leather on this upper is so soft, which is awesome. All right, let's jump into more of a, an aggressive dribbling drill and we'll talk a little bit more about performance characteristics. Here we go. All right, getting, getting the boots back on quick. Um, I'm just gonna show all of the like undoing and redoing just to give, show you guys like how the boots continue to break in. So once they slip in, man, like look at that. Oh, so soft in that forefoot area. Um, and as I mentioned before, so one of the things that I think these do a really good job of is the leather in the forefoot molds to your foot immediately, like immediately. They're like zero break in time in that forefoot area. Um, it's just the midfoot that's gonna provide a little bit of those hot spots because it is a more structured upper, which I think does this boot so many good things when it comes to performance benefits, um, but it, it does, kind of suck for those of us who are a little bit wider footed here in the in the midfoot area. If you are somebody who has a thinner midfoot or just an average midfoot and then either a wide toe box, honestly any any width of toe box, you are going to I think you are going to absolutely froth these. And I think that's why the majority of people who wear these football boots are absolutely stoked with them. All right, here we go. Jumping into um this one, so we're just gonna go, you guys have probably seen this 100,000 times already, um, but we're just gonna go through this technical drill. Great for me as a somebody who wants to work on dribbling, but also really good for uh, testing football boots. Here we go. Little V cut action, nice. And then, whoop, get that form going, there we go. Here we go, up, turn. Nice, lovely. Love that, and all the way through. Okay, okay, so as I spoke about before, the feeling, okay, this is gonna, it's gonna sound bad, 
and then let me explain it. These boots don't feel sloppy, but they're a little bit, I think, too, they're not as structured in the forefoot as much as maybe I'd like. So I wouldn't say overall that I get like sloppy feeling, but they don't feel as locked in. And maybe that's just because I haven't worn them like as much, so I'm not used to them. Um, like this is fine, V cuts are good. And then as I come around, they just feel a little bit, especially with turning, shot fake, nice. Um, they just feel a little bit more higher volume than some of the other boots that I'm used to. Um, which again, like kind of whatever, they're still really comfortable and I'll get used to them. Um, but just something to keep in mind if you are somebody who wants like the tightest possible fit. One benefit is if you do have kind of thinner feet and just in general, your feet are a lot slimmer, you could probably get away going half a size down with these. And I reckon they would be like the best football boots ever. <laughs> All right move up here with some different skill sets. Boom, nice. Last one, here we go. Touch, we got away from me there. A little tight control, love that. Cut, turn, cut, turn, rogue cone, here we go. Back, touch, back, touch. Lovely, yeah, I mean look, like, it's not sloppy to the point where I would ever consider not wearing them, um, but I don't know. They're not a perfect fit for me, at least right now. My goal is to break them into the point where they are, of course, but um, so far, pretty good. So far, pretty good. Not quite maybe the best. Um, DS Lite X55 fits my foot a little bit better, I think, than these and are a little more snug. Maybe that's because the quality of the leather isn't as, it's amazing, but it's not like made in Japan Mizuno quality. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Be honest, does the Volt make my feet look faster? Because <laughs> if that's the case, then I should just wear these for the color. Love that. Okay, first iteration of this little passing drill we're gonna do. I love this one. So come up at speed, dribble in, out, touch out, and then I'm just gonna pass it here. Um, I might get into a little bit more of like uh, kind of a bent shot, if you will, uh, at some point in this drill. I'm only gonna do about eight to 10 reps each side just to get a little bit warmed up for the shooting portion of the video. Um, but what I will say is, as you're coming out, if you wanna do this, it's just three or four cones there. Make sure you have a little target so that you can really focus on getting that into the corner. Um, if, you have a, if you have one of those like skill shot things, fantastic. But for me, I'm just gonna use a cone because that's easy and it's also just a super chill way to get it. Here we go. Nice, lovely. Really nice feel. I love, like, the connectedness you feel with these boots is, is fantastic. So no complaints there. Um, dribbling feels really nice as well. Ooh, a little bit more shot than I wanted, but almost went top ends. That's cool. So, yeah, I mean, again, no complaints. I know previous section I was like, oh, these kind of feel a little bit sloppy. Like, yes. But as I'm getting more and more used to the boots, they feel a little bit more, um, I don't know, a little bit more natural. That's one thing that I think these, these do really well. Ooh. Is they feel super, super natural on feet, which two, three, four. Okay, let's go one more on the side. Um, and that's definitely a feeling that I'm willing to sacrifice over, lovely, um, over a little bit of lockdown. So 
something to keep in mind. Let's get you guys behind the goal and give you guys a little bit of a different angle of what dribbling in these bad boys look like. All right, so we'll go four, four stone more reps with these and then we'll go from there. Really, really good. Feels awesome underfoot as well, even though this is a turf pitch, like still great underfield foot. Touch. Nice, nice. Very good. Good feeling. Again, one of the things that I spoke about before with the kind of the seamlessness between the transition of synthetic to leather provides a really nice feel as you're hitting it with that type of that style of shot where you're sort of bending the ball, um, maybe curving it around the player or trying to whip it across, anything like that. Nice. All good so far. Really, really nice feeling underfoot. Really nice feeling of just the ball in general and looking forward to uh, doing some proper shooting of these as well. Lovely. Let's go right foot. All right, here we go. Some right footed shots. Same idea. And let's get it back through. Lovely. Lovely. A little off balance there for, but that's not the boots. That's just me as a player. Getting uh, that technique on that right foot going. It's one thing I've been trying to work on for a while. Weak foot stuff. <laughs> Lovely. Good feel. Again, can't stress enough how natural these feel on feet. It's one thing that I think this boot does really well is provide a good amount of lockdown, but also doesn't give you the sense that you're like strapped into something, which for some people that's awesome. Lovely. Very nice. Getting there. Love that. They're breaking in well. I do feel a little bit of hot spot on the outside of my foot still, but that is to be expected from a boot like this. Nice. All right, let's get you behind the goal. All right, here we go. Second round, right foot. Boom, boom. Get that control going. Bang, nice. A Little bit of a bobbly bounce here on the turf. That is A-OK. -okay. Feeling good still. Probably after this round, right before we get into the proper shooting, I'll take the boots off one last time. Touch, play, Ooh. Nice. Still getting that control down with the right foot. What's good here is you're sort of seeing breaking in first impressions of the boot, but also I don't hardly ever drink right foot. I usually would dribble left foot here and then go one, two, three, and then play, right? So really making sure that you're getting both feet, I think is really important. Obviously, I probably work more on my left foot just to make sure it's extra, extra good. And then as best I can, working on right foot is super important as well. <laughs> because in a sticky situation, we in a sticky situation, let's go one more. Um, you know, you gotta be able to do both, which is always important. Feeling more and more comfortable. I also just got out of filming the Predator uh, lace model, and those are wildly different. Nice, than these ones. So, something to keep in mind is, as I'm getting used to these, I'm sure you'll hear me start to be more and more impressed, but I'm gonna, take these off really quick because I want to make sure that I don't absolutely destroy my feet and unlace them, get them untied, maybe walk around barefoot for two minutes. But yeah, very, very good. You can see how, see how the insole comes out. That's just because this insole is super grippy and my grip socks are really grippy. So they kind of pull the insole out of the boot, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, just something to keep aware of, I guess. Oh, lovely. Okay, there we go. Let's jump into some shooting. All right, last little test here. We're just gonna get the boots back on and uh, get some proper shooting in. Oh, lovely. Feeling better and better every time I put these on. Um, one of the things that I think is maybe not gonna be a problem for most of you guys out there who aren't 
you know, trying to break in and wear like every boot on the market. Uh, there are very select few people who kind of put themselves through that, including myself and uh, some of the other reviewers on YouTube and Instagram and stuff. And I gotta tell you, getting used to boots is a proper thing. Like getting used to the feel of a boot like this versus a boot like the Predator versus a boot like the GX, like they're all slightly different and they all slightly kind of change the way that you adapt to the ball. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Now that I'm getting used to these, God, they feel, look at that leather. Oh, just absolutely sensational. Um, one of the things that I am noticing too is I've got just the tiniest bit of space there on the end. Uh, you can see a little bit of dead space here in the toe area. I am honestly happy to kind of take that amount of dead space if it means that the fit is a little bit better. I think the fit of the eight and a half of these, again, these are true to size. These are nine as opposed to a nine, or as opposed to eight and a half that I wore with those original launch colorway models. Uh, these are, these fit perfectly, I think. And I'm happy to take a tiny bit of extra room on the end if it means that I'm gonna be able to fit in the rest of the boot really well. So here we go, let's get some shots in. All right, so very simple here. All we're gonna do is weave in and out of the cones. So starting drive, drive, drive at the outside, touch, cut in, and then one touch. And then my idea is to really just get form and kind of bend it in and around the edge of that pink cone on the far post side. I could do near post stuff, but just for right now, the sake of this video, we're just gonna do that. Here we go. Decent first shot. Decent first shot there. All right, here we go, second one. A little bit too much. Um, feel on the ball feels fantastic. There's no grip elements on the upper, so that is something if you are somebody who doesn't really like grip. Um, if you, if, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, if you aren't somebody who likes grip, these might be actually a really lovely fit for, for most people. Ooh, not so much. One thing, shooting tip. If you're gonna whip and bend the ball, push the ball, if the goal's there, instead of pushing the ball towards the goal, push it across or kind of almost behind you. So you hit around and it makes back post type stuff much easier. If you're gonna whip it near post, you can kind of push it in front of you. But if you're gonna push it in front of you, it makes it really hard to like orient your body and get that technique of that whip. Whereas if you, that's the whole point of this, right? I'm setting this up so that the 18 yard box is sort of my guide. I take the touch across the 18 and that's a perfect ability to just like, boom, whip the ball. So let's get one more and then we'll put you guys behind the goal and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Kind of put my money where my mouth is, if you will. Touch, play across the 18 and then much better form than that previous one. Although obviously it wasn't as uh, not as pretty as I wanted it to be. Let's put you guys behind the goal. All right, here we go, four or five on the other round. Make sure that we uh, do this properly, really get a good sense of what these are like to whip a ball in. Obviously, I'm somebody who very seldom would be in this position because I'm a left back, so I'd be on that side. Um, but just for the sake of showing you guys a little bit of whip and swerve. There you go, nice, love that. So again, technique here is paramount. And then of course, adding power as you start to nail the technique, as you get used to your football boots. Um, let's say you're in these ones, really no nonsense because they're just so seamless on your foot. I really don't think anyone, love that. I don't think anyone's gonna have issues breaking these in, nor are they gonna really have problems with any type of strike. Like there's not gonna be, you know, there's not gonna be issues with like the 99 gram leather boots that I mentioned before where it just, it just feels like it's such a bulbous forefoot area. Um, with these, you get very little distractions. Oh, almost. Um, very little distractions. So that's something that I really appreciate about these boots. But hey, the lack of heel slippage, the lockdown, the softness, the softness of the upper. Oh, what a package. What a package. Still got a little bit of space, dead space around the outside of that ankle, but 
overall pretty, pretty good. Here we go, last one. Not quite, that's right. All right, here we go, right footed. Um, time to get some of this, uh, this right foot stuff going on. And same thing, just other side, here we go. Again, a little bit more whip. So as I push the ball a little bit further, like more of a acute angle. So if I'm coming around here, touching through the cones, and as I touch the ball back almost, that'll give me a much better angle to sort of whip the ball around, which will be very beneficial for crossing, shooting, all that stuff. All right, here we go. Yeah, see, crap angle again. Just something to think about that I'm trying to work on with right foot as well. Um, as I said before, ideally I'd be probably dribbling left footed here, um, but I'm gonna do my best to keep going right footed just to kind of get that practice going and maybe throw off a couple defenders while I'm at it, you know? Here we go. Very good feeling. The, the thinness of this leather does such a nice job of kind of giving you that seamless feeling. Boom, there we go. Oh, that's the shot we're looking for right there. See, I pulled it almost backwards and then I'm able to get way more leverage on that whip. All right, let's go one more here and then we'll get you guys behind the goal. And then backwards. Yeah, a little bit too central, but the shot is coming along. That technique is coming along there. So you're seeing it in live time. How cool is that? Okay, sick. Last little round here, and then we'll get into the final little test for the Morelia Neo 4 Betas, which will be more of like a ping, kind of crossbar challenge-ish, but I just wanna simulate doing some long balls. I'm still getting a little bit of pinching on the outside of my feet. That is to be expected from a boot like this that's kind of more of a speed boot, um, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> Oh, close and hits the camera. All right, we're good. Good technique there, much better. Definitely feeling uh, my feet now a little bit. Touch, bang, nice. Lovely, 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 lovely. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And these boots are feeling very good. All right, here we go. Touch, cut, oh yeah. Ooh, a little bit much. Oh, that was kind of close actually. All right, last little bit. Here we go. Oh, wow, shocking technique. Let's get one more. I've got one more ball back here. Can't end on something like that. Just gotta get the touches right. You are seeing live the process of working on a weak foot. Shooting, crossing, super comfy. Dribbling at pace and then taking a touch to shoot. That's one thing that's a little bit on my to-do list. Nice, much better, cool. All right, well that wraps up like more the kind of crossing simulation, shooting simulation. Let's get into some little bit of crossbar challenge pings, and then we will jump into the kind of final conclusions for this play test of the Morelia Neo 4 Beta. All right, last little bit here. All I'm gonna be doing is just taking a touch. I wanna hit a moving ball, so just a little bit of tap in front of me and try to get it into the crossbar. A Little bit of like a long ball simulation. So a little bit of a clip. And uh, I mean, or we could just hit top ins every time. That's cool too. Um, Really nice seamless fit and feel. This is, so this exact kind of position there, so that, that kind of sliced hit is the same thing that frustrates me on the 99 gram leather boots because there is such a kind of thicker bulbous piece of leather on that forefoot area. It doesn't feel as crispy clean as when you ping that. Like that feels so clean, so nice, just like no distractions, smooth, playing surface um, kind of in that area of the foot. And uh, yeah, no complaints really. And I'll talk about it a little bit in the conclusion, but here we go. Let's just get some of the right foot ones as well. Just lift it, 
lovely first time class. Okay, last two. Here we go. A little bit of ping. Nice, really nice. Just good feel. I love, I mean, leather boots in general to like ping a ball usually feel pretty sensational. These are no different. Give me that. All right, so final conclusion thoughts for the first play test of the Mizuno Morelia Neo 4 Betas. These are very, very good football boots. I get the hype. Um, I haven't, this is the first time that I've actually spent like proper, proper time in these football boots. And I gotta say, these are very nice. I don't know yet quite if they're gonna be game boots for me. Um, they definitely will hit the training ground at some point. That is one thing that I absolutely will be doing. Um, but for me, it is gonna be a matter of figuring out whether these are exactly what I'm looking for from a game performance perspective. Let's go over a few of the features that I'm noticing first um, for the initial play test. So uh, sole plate, super, super nice. Has great grip into the ground, both on AG and on FG surfaces. I've now worn them on both and they feel fantastic. I tend to prefer FG surfaces just in general as most I'm sure purists do, um, but really, really fantastic football boots um, from a sole plate perspective. Nice rigidity, no issues, no hot spots or or anything like that. The upper, really nice. The forefoot area does have a little bit of extra space than I'm what I'm usually used to, but that's okay. That's just something that I can get used to. And then the midfoot is very, very snug, very tight in a good way. I think it provides an excellent amount of lockdown and the heel area does as well. So heel area um, and the midfoot area both provide an awesome amount of lockdown, no issues, no complaints there. Really looking forward to uh, breaking these in a little bit further and um, kind of giving my thoughts after one month review. You, you guys will probably see more play test videos with these, but hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'll put the um, initial review right here so you guys can go check that one out. And if you do have any questions that I haven't answered about the initial play test with these, let me know down in the comment section below. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.